Hey Insiders, it's Rachel here and I'm a product manager on YouTube's recommendation system. I spent the last few years working on YouTube analytics um, and my job was really to help creators understand their video performance. Today, I wanted to share a presentation that I normally give at conferences um, that helps explain how the recommendation system works and what factors influence how many impressions your videos receive. So I hope it's helpful. Let's get into it. Okay, so in this section, we're gonna cover in general, how the recommendation system works and what it's designed to do. If you learn anything from this presentation, I hope it's that you do not need to be an expert in algorithms or analytics to be successful on YouTube. You just need to understand your audience. So to start, let's talk about the goals of the recommendation system. Those have always remained the same. The algorithm is designed to do two things, match viewers with videos they're most likely to watch and enjoy, and then hopefully recommend videos that make them happy. So we really maximize long-term satisfaction. So viewers keep coming back to YouTube because they know that they'll find videos that they'll like there. Now, although our goals have always been the same, what we optimize for has changed over time. If we go back to 2011, uh, we were optimizing for clicks and views. And this was not unique to YouTube. I think many platforms started recommending videos that people were just likely to click into. But that's not that great of a metric because uh, it may indirectly incentivize clickbaity or sensational titles or thumbnails um, that get people in to watch a video, but it doesn't make them very satisfied or happy. And we received a lot of viewer feedback um, in and around the 2011 time period that a lot of the viewers' homepages or recommendations were these sensational or off-putting videos. And so to help correct for that, we moved towards watch time and how much time somebody spends watching a video or a channel is much more indicative of the quality of the content because if you spend more time watching something, it is more likely that you're gonna be interested in it. But watch time is not a perfect metric either. So I'm sure you've all spent time uh, maybe binging through a series that you watched hours of, but you still didn't feel that good afterwards. And so what we wanted to identify is how do we define quality or valued watch time? And so what we wanted to optimize more towards is satisfaction. And the way we do that is directly asking viewers about what videos they like and enjoy through surveys and then actually optimizing for what they like. And not only is satisfaction important, but we've also added more and more responsibility objectives because especially in um, spaces like news or medical information, it's really important that we raise authoritative voices and content and reduce the spread of any borderline violative content that could harm viewers or contribute to the spread of misinformation. So if you fast forward to today, uh, what we actually optimize for in discovery is much more satisfaction related goals, like what videos do viewers not only watch, but make them happy, um, as well as making sure that we're doing it responsibly. Okay, so if I just spoke all the time about satisfaction, you're like, well, how do you actually measure satisfaction? We serve out millions of surveys per month to viewers. Now, they're not served on every single video. The viewers don't fill this out for every video they watch. We don't wanna overwhelm viewers with surveys. But we use this data to train prediction models to identify which videos are highly satisfying. So an individual viewer may only receive one or two of these surveys per month. But the main point you need to understand is that we no longer consider all watch time on YouTube to be equal. We really focus on satisfaction. Surveys are one of the most important uh, pieces of data that we use to train this. We don't yet share this data with creators today because we often don't have enough significant data on an individual video for you to really make significant conclusions around it. So sometimes an individual video might only receive five responses. Now that information is valuable to us because we can still train our prediction models and be like, okay, identify stuff that's satisfying in general. But for an individual creator, sometimes that's not enough data to act on. We are looking at adding more satisfaction data um, and externalizing it to creators. So it is something we're working on. But surveys aren't the only piece of data that we look at for satisfaction. So in addition to that, we also use signals uh, from viewers like not interested feedback. So when videos are recommended to viewers on the homepage or suggested, do they click not interested? We also use signals like likes and dislikes and shares to determine whether a video is satisfying. Throughout this presentation, I'm gonna use the word recommended or recommendations a lot. And I wanted to clarify what I mean when I say that. So recommendations, when I say that I'm referring to the homepage and suggested, or the videos that are algorithmically offered up to viewers that they may want to watch on the page when they open youtube.com or the mobile app, which is home, or the recommendations that are shown alongside the video the viewer is currently watching. 
So that's what suggested is. So suggested on desktop is like the panel on the side or um, the videos beneath the one you're watching on mobile. Now, creators often refer to the algorithm. We actually have different systems depending on where viewers are watching videos on YouTube. Like the homepage offers up a broad array of videos uh, when you visit youtube.com and it uses similar signals as suggested, but they are designed to do slightly different things. So the algorithm is a bit of a misnomer because we actually have multiple systems that are designed to do different things, uh, depending on if the viewer is on home, suggested, or search. But when I say recommendations, I'm talking about home and suggested. This is how the majority of viewers watch and discover videos on YouTube. So it's likely um, that these are the top traffic sources for your channel, but that's of course not always the case. A lot of creators ask, how do I optimize my content so I get more views from Homer Suggested? And the difficult answer is you can't. You can't optimize for a traffic source. You can only optimize for people or viewers. But I will describe how they work and some general things you can do to optimize uh, to build an audience. So let's start with the home page. Home offers up a broad array of videos that viewers are most likely to watch when they visit YouTube. And at that stage, we don't have a lot of information about the intent the viewer might have when they're when they're coming to YouTube. Maybe they're coming here to learn something, or maybe they're coming here to be entertained. So Home offers a, a pretty diverse array of recommendations. And the way it ranks videos is primarily based on two main categories. The first one's performance. So that means the signals that you're probably already familiar with, like click-through rate, average view duration, um, and if the viewers are happy. So performance is really looking at how a video performs when it is offered to viewers on home. So in the context it's shown. So the homepage is really learning from when videos are recommended to viewers on home, what do they do with it? Do they click to watch? Do they click not interested? Do they ignore it and click something else? In addition to that, we have personalization. So if we only use performance, like click-through rate and average view duration to inform which recommendations were good for viewers, uh, YouTube would just be like a giant explore or like trending tab, which is not the case. It's all personalized for the viewer's own interest. And so we use a combination of both performance and personalization. And personalized factors are like how much that individual viewer uh, watches a channel or topic over time or their recent watch history. That also helps inform, is this a good relevant recommendation for that viewer? Now, again, there's nothing you can specifically do to get more views from home, but you can look at your content and think, what would a new viewer who has never been exposed or watched any of the content from my channel, what would they do if they saw this recommendation? Like really look at your title and thumbnail from the eyes of a new viewer. This is where a lot of content is discovered for the first time is on the homepage. And so be sure to look at your content and think, would a new viewer click to watch if they had otherwise never been exposed to this content? So maybe you have a video that's like, it's my mom's birthday. If you're a vlogging channel, that might be relevant to your core audience, but if we recommend that to a new viewer on home, they might be likely to ignore that recommendation and click something else because it doesn't mean something for them. Okay, moving on to suggested. Now suggested is designed to offer up the best videos that a viewer is most likely to watch next after the one they're currently watching. So suggested to rank videos uses a lot of signals such as uh, videos that are often watched together. This helps us identify videos that you might not have seen that are relevant to your interests. Uh, topically related videos, but also they're not just videos that are relevant to the one you're currently watching. They're also based on your past watch history. They're both personalized and uh, a little bit more related. And suggested, the recommendations are usually a little bit narrowed down compared to the homepage because we already have an idea of what kind of session the viewer is having at that point. Again, can't optimize for suggested, but you can optimize to keep people watching your channel. The most effective thing that I've seen creators do is, of course, develop series or topically related videos. Those videos are more likely to be recommended together because people are more likely to watch them in the same session. So you can imagine if I'm watching a video about um, antique music boxes, I'm more likely to get more music box videos in the panel on the side or in suggested. So if you develop a series that is really consistent or has commonalities between the content, it is more likely to be recommended together. Viewers are more, more likely to watch them one after another. And so series is one effective way to keep people watching. Having a consistent title and thumbnail style is another. So you can imagine when a viewer is looking at everything that they could choose to watch next, there are a lot of options there. And if you have really strong, identifiable branding that's consistent, it's really easy to pick out which videos are from your channel 
and it just makes that decision all the quicker for viewers. And of course, there's other stuff you can do. You can do call to actions to watch more. If you liked this video, I think you'd be interested in another one on my channel. And we have playlists and end screens, and those work too. Okay. Another question I often get from creators is, should I worry or be concerned about if a video has more or fewer views from a specific traffic source? And I wanted to reassure creators that this is completely normal. Viewers discover videos in different ways, and that's expected. So for example, learning or how-to videos, they often get more views from search because that's how viewers try and find learning videos. Like we don't know to recommend a video to them when they visit YouTube because we don't have any signals at that point that they are there on YouTube to learn how to build a workbench. So how-to content often gets more views from search. Music, on the other hand, often gets more views from playlists um, or mix, mixes, because that's how people listen to music on YouTube, is often through autoplay or playlists. Uh, news content often gets more views from the homepage, because we have a breaking news shelf there, and that's how a lot of viewers who are interested in news discover content. And so if you see different traffic source mixes, video to video, don't worry about it. It's completely normal. It depends on the type of content and how the viewer really is engaging with this type of content on YouTube. But just know that viewers discover videos in different ways, and that's completely normal. So if you learned anything from this section, I hope it's that you understand that YouTube's recommendation system is designed to find videos for viewers and not viewers for videos. And what I mean by that is sometimes creators have a perception that the recommendation system pushes out or promotes videos to viewers. And in reality, the system is designed to work the opposite way, where a viewer visits youtube.com and then our recommendation system pulls in and then ranks the best candidate for that viewer, depending on the page that they're on. And so it is a viewer focused system. So that's all for this first video. In the next one, we're gonna cover what factors influences how many impressions uh, your videos receive and how many people see your video at the end of the day. As always, keep it real.